This video answers the question, what are the basic building blocks of risk models so that we can clearly communicate the, the big idea of some kind of risk problem that we're working on before getting into the details of specific equations. This is from a systems engineering perspective, but it applies generally to uh, risk analysis broadly. To motivate this, I want to talk about some modeling fallacies that we need to avoid. The first one is this idea of, of the expected value. Uh, picture you're, you're going down a trail and, and there's some kind of a puddle on the trail. You're riding your bike and you're trying to make a decision whether you should go through the puddle or not. And there's a little sign there that says the expected value is uh, the expected value of the depth of the water is three feet. Would you go through it? Well, probably not. Because you know that it's shallow on the ends and then it's probably deep in the middle. And there's some probability that you might uh, lose your, uh, you might get sick from the water or you might lose a wheel in some kind of a big divot that you won't be able to see. The second fall fallacy is this idea that correlations are not causation. Despite the fact that data covaries, it doesn't mean that there's a causal impact. The third idea is related to that, which is we want to know the probability that our hypothesis is true given the data. But uh, what we have is the p-value, which is the probability that we see our data given the null hypothesis is true. So when that's low, the, the, the covariating of data might be significant, but what we really want is this, and frequently people transpose that. Um, we're going to worry about this fallacy of induction. We're going to worry about human bias. Kahneman and Tversky talked about how... Uh, Humans are not very good at predicting probabilities, and yet we're going to rely on humans because in rare events we won't have much data. We're going to be concerned with this idea that uh, people sometimes like to rate and weight functions, assuming that somehow it's equal to this risk. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is there's frequently dependence between these uh, factors, and that dependence results in, in uh, uh, nonlinear effects on the risk that we won't capture. And the last is this idea that uh, sometimes we form these risk registries. We, we list off a bunch of risks, and then we list off the mitigation and check it off as if, it's, if, as if it's completely done. But what we'll realize is that just because we have a mitigation in place doesn't mean that uh, the risk is gone. So what we're going to do is we're going to have some kind of building blocks to, to make system models so that we can see this, see what the risks are and what's causing these risks at a high level and that we can play around with levers uh, that constitute the decisions that we're trying to make. So let's consider, for example, the, the, uh, the risks to a farmer of losing his crop. Um, we might start with asking ourselves, what's the most fundamental characteristics um, of a farm? And uh, we can think through this, and we can think about money, we can think about seeds, we can think about soil. and. Um, we might ask ourselves a more specific question, why do farmers irrigate their crops in non-ready seasons? And as we think through this, ultimately we want to come to the most fundamental characteristic, and uh, in, that, in this case it's soil moisture. Soil moisture allows us to simplify this, this, this challenging problem by capturing a very fundamental characteristic. All of the inputs uh, in an irrigation system will affect soil moisture. The rain, the pipe size, the, in, the, uh, the downstream effects, uh, the, the water runoff from other uphill uh, farms, the types of irrigation systems that we use, all of this will affect soil moisture. And then soil moisture will affect our output. And this will be healthy plants, uh, it'll be profit, <coughs> it'll be uh, size and growth rate of crops. And these outputs will help us to understand our objectives. Our objectives always start with max or min. So we're going to maximize profit while minimizing our costs. Our decision variables are the things that we have control over. In this case, it's our irrigation system, timing, type, right? It's, our, it's, it's the, the things that we can control. Our random variables 
are things that contain a lot of uncertainty. So this might be the rain. It might be rates of vandalism by um, whoever doesn't like our crops. <clears throat> the exogenous variables are things that we're going to set or assume. They're things that affect the state of the system, but we're not going to necessarily vary them. So this might be the pipe diameter. This might be uh, um, uh, irrigation ditch uh, width. Uh, the inputs, there are other inputs that affect this, and they might be inputs that we don't have control over. They're, they're the ones that come from other systems. So this might be the runoff <coughs> from upstream. This might be the runoff from upstream systems from uh, other farms and things like that. Once we have these uh, building blocks, now we can go with our team and we can start arguing about, uh, does this really capture the risks that we're concerned with? <clears throat> have we captured all the inputs that matter? Have we, are our outputs measurable and uh, do they relate to the objectives that we have in mind? Are there other objectives? See, we can argue about each of these pieces and we can form a high level model that gives us the sense for what are these building blocks and it will provide a way for us to understand the system in a way that, it, that we can overcome these fallacies that exist in traditional modeling. Even though our data might be rare, um, our data might be sparse because the events are rare, or in some cases our data might not be in, uh, even existent because we're talking about some emergent phenomenon. But these building blocks of models help to form the foundation and they'll even define then later on how we build these equations, right? So we're going to build an equation for soil moisture. That's a function of pipe diameter and the runoff from other systems and our irrigation system and the rain. We're going to form another function that describes the relationship between the outputs and these state variables and maybe some of the inputs themselves and a relationship between those outputs and the objectives. These will become the equations that constitute our risk model but at this high level, we're able to have a tool to explore um, uh, the, the inputs and outputs, the state variables, the fundamental characteristics in order to avoid these fallacies. <clears throat>